Hi scholars, happy Wednesday. Today we're going to be reading chapter 2 of unit 9. It's our final unit. We did chapter 1 on Monday and Tuesday. Today we're going to be doing chapter 2 that's titled A Bed of Bones. Your digital readers in the video description below looks like this. And when you get your um, reader out, please flip to page 8 that looks like this. Before we get started, let's review some things. We have a do now and some vocabulary before we dive into our text. Looking at our um, check-in beforehand, this week we have um, crazy hair day today for Spirit Week. Unfortunately, I already took a shower and did my hair today, so it's not as crazy as it could be. Um, if you've done crazy hair day today or you have something really cool going on, make sure you send a photo of it to Mr. Cowan. His phone number is, should be on the Facebook page under the Spirit Week um add and then if you go back to our video on monday where i have the whole spirit week calendar his phone number is on there as well next our unit eight assessment closes on edge elastic tonight at 11 so that's your last chance to get that done now don't forget to sign in and complete your iReady math and reading i would just do it today so you get it done as quick as possible and you don't have to worry about it for the week first we have our do now for the day you're going to be adding commas periods or you might have to add a conjunction to the following sentences as necessary so they're not run-ons. All three of these are run-on sentences. Look through them, read them aloud especially, to see where you might need to add a comma, period, or conjunction before we go over our answer key. Go ahead and start working on them. I'm going to read them out loud. That's the best way to help find an error in your work or your writing is to read it out loud to yourself. And that part of your brain goes like, that's caveman English. That doesn't sound exactly right. Number one. People see colors and describe textures differently. A fossil that looks like dark brown to me might look different to someone else. Number two, grooves dents or possibly bite marks made by predators are on the raptor claw. Number three, shape and texture, the roughness or smoothness of something are physical properties of matter. Look at the end of every sentence as well. There's definitely at least one thing to add to everything. Take a moment before we go over the answer key. So after you heard them read, around, uh, read out loud, you should be able to pick up on some of the more obvious errors. I marked them in red. Look at number one. People see colors and describe textures differently. You need to add a period after differently, and then that means we'll capitalize A, fossil, that looks dark brown to me, might look different to someone else. All these sentences need punctuation on the end, so we're going to slap a period there. Number two starts with a list, so we're going to add commas. Grooves, comma, dents, comma, or possible bite marks are made by predators are on the raptor claw, period. And number three is also a bit of a list, but they're phrases, shapes and textures, comma, the roughness or smoothing, smoothness of the roughness or smoothness of something, comma, are physical properties of matter. So these two physical properties, they're listing them off beforehand. That's why we have to separate them with commas and end that one with a period as well. What are you doing in the background? You wanted to say hi? Let's look at our daily objective of the day first. I can compare and contrast scientific content in literary and informational text through sentence expansion. Literary and informational texts are both things you've read before. Literary texts are things like our plays or Don Quixote, your lit study books, and informational texts are things like your readers in science class or like in our a Native American unit where they're more about teaching you the history. Today, our reader actually combines both of them as we talked about, and we're gonna do some sentence expansion to compare and contrast and see how these things, these um, methods or texts are similar and different. Two new vocab words we're gonna to see today. A plateau is a noun. It's an area of high level ground, usually with no slope. So think of a hill that goes up and then is flat at the top. So the area like you might go to the top and then there's a flat area you might be able to camp on at the top. 
Number two is an adverb. So an, ad uh, an adverb, remember, is an adjective that describes the verb. Reluctantly means unwillingly. You're not sure. So if your friends keep pestering you to come do this with them, but you feel nervous about it, you don't think it's a good idea, you might reluctantly say yes because you might have been peer pressured. If you have to really do something you don't want to, like take a test or do some homework, you might reluctantly agree to do it for a little bit before you go play games. Let's practice some word work first. We're going to just use our word, uh, vocab words and then finish the sentence. Number one, we went up to the plateau and saw. So remember, you're at a high level ground. If you're high up, maybe what will you see below? And number two, I reluctantly had to dot, dot, dot. Take a moment and finish off these sentences on your own before we move on to our reader. For your reader today, you're not going to be reading the whole chapter. It's chapter two, A Bed of Bones. The whole chapter goes from around page eight to, oh, I'd say maybe 15. You're not going to be reading all of it today. You're only going to be reading pages eight to 12, and I would like you to do that independently. Tomorrow, I'm going to finish reading the chapter with you, but I want you to read it on your own today because I want you looking for specific things on your own. So our big question, how can water, ice, and vapor all be the same thing? We've already talked about different states of matter, and they're going to dive into that a little bit more today. But I want you to review this first chunk. It's only five pages of chapter two. What parts do you notice are narrative or literary, and what parts do you notice are informational? So just a review from our notes. Narrative is anything that provides a story. Think of a play or a book. And informational is something that provides information. It teaches you something. Think of a reader like you might have in class or think of a textbook in science class. I would like you to read today to fill out that chart in your packet that looks similar to the one here. I'd like you to try and find some examples of vocabulary and features of narrative and informational text. So what kind of vocabulary is in a narrative text? Those are things like strong adjectives or descriptors. If they just say someone's doing something reluctantly, they're trying to build tension in a story. And then when we're talking about features, we're talking about tricks or little uh, methods that a, they might use in a story to teach you about it. So these are things like exposition, when a character starts telling you all about the story at once to catch you up, or personification when we give human traits to something. So if they're describing these fossils as being like really tough or like the fossils are hiding from them in the dirt, that's personification they're giving to these non-living things. Same thing for informational. What are some examples of vocab in there? That's stuff like scientific vocabulary, like matter or mass or scientific names for animals. They're trying to teach you the scientific vocab. And then what do they try and teach us in terms of real scientific concepts? So yesterday they taught us about matter and mass, and they taught us about states of matter. What else are they trying to teach us today scientifically? Think about what are they trying to teach you today that almost feels like we're in science class in the middle of our book when they take a moment to try and teach you it. So for now, I would like you to finish pages 8 through 12. After that, we have some sentence expansion I'd like to walk you through next. So these are going to look familiar because we've done a lot of kernel sentences and sentence expansion this year as do nows. So you might already have a head start. The kernel, remember, is that small basic part, like a small piece of a kernel and a piece of popcorn that's going to blow up into something bigger. It's going to help us paint the picture when we add our key words like when, where, how, why, and who. So the kernel is we learned about properties. That's really basic. It tells us who it is, or it, rather it tells us what happened. So we, a group of people, in this case students, learned, that's our verb, about what? What's our noun? Properties. Properties of matter. So when did we learn this? During ELA class. We watched it, uh, we learned it in our video the other day. Where? Uh, you could say in your own bedroom. I just say in the classroom because that's typically where we'd be doing this. How? We learned it through our reader, through the textbook. Why do we learn about properties? To learn how water can change states or about how anything can change states but specifically water is the example they use in our textbook because it's the easiest to show for going from a solid liquid to a gas and then with who with mr sheline we can expand this and just add these details in our ela class with mr sheline we learned about properties of matter in our reader to learn about how water can change states 
So if you're ever writing a race response or a single paragraph outline or an essay and you're struggling to come up with an extra sentence or you feel like this isn't long enough, I'm missing some details, try and go back and look for these kernel sentences in your essay that you might be able to expand with these rich details. That makes it go from a proficient response to usually an advanced response when you add these good details. And lastly, after that, we have our... Um, own example I'd like you to work on. So the kernel sentence is just paleontologist tools. So in the chapter two's beginning, it talks about how each of the um, students at the camp get their little uh, cloth sack of their paleontologist tools. So we're going to paint the picture and add some key details on our own. When are they being used? When are they using these tools? Where are they using them? How are they being used? So what kind of tools are they? And then how are they using them? So for example, it's a hammer. They'd be swinging it. Maybe they're trying to break rocks. How are they using a brush? Oh, they're going back and forth across a bone to clean it off. Why are they using them? What purpose do these tools have? And then who used them? So using a specific example of a member of the camp. And then at the very bottom, you're just going to add all these together. An example, an expanded sentence of paleontologist tools. Paleontologist tools are used where, when, how, why, and who is using them. It doesn't have to be an essay, it's just one good long expanded sentence. After that, we actually have wrapped up our first half of chapter two today. Tomorrow on Thursday, we're gonna be finishing up the second half of chapter two, and then on Friday, we're gonna be starting chapter three. In the meantime, scholars, you have my phone number if you need to reach out and get in a hold of me. If you have any questions, feel free. I'm not doing much right now, so I look forward to hearing from you guys. But stay safe and have a great day. Bye-bye.